Never stop proving yourself, ever. Don't go one day, you prove yourself to your husband, your wife, your kids, yourself, your family, your haters, your customers. It never ends, do you get it? Anything that anyone else can do, you can do. Swear on my life. And that's why you gotta stay stirred up. That's why you gotta stay pissed off. That's it, it's the only way to get somewhere. You gotta have emotion. You gotta anchor it to something that when you don't wanna do it, you do it anyway. Winners do what they don't wanna do when they don't feel like doing it, but do it like they love it. That's what winners do. And they do it every day. And there's no one there to remind them. No one. I've got a badass team. I've got a badass wife. I'm the leader. I build more leaders. Whatever you're letting slide, you're letting everyone else that loves you around you slide. All right, guys. Hey, super important. Number one, everybody give it up for Chad one more time because that was badass. Love you, Chad. All right, so super, super important. Everybody, look, this right here, this room, this is a hero-making machine. Does that make sense? Look, everybody in this world wants a level 10 earning opportunity. Am I right? You guys got it. Do we got it? Okay, we've been in here for a long time. I see some of you guys are tired. You got to pee. You want to yawn. Just a second, okay? I'm gonna give you guys some things to think about, but I want you to know this. Sales and leadership will get you rich. That's what I want you to know, okay? Every single one of you, uh, Chad shirt said culture. Culture is everything to me. Who in here right now is in sales? Raise your hand. Let me see your hand. Okay, look, every hand that's up, if your hand is up, if you're in sales, I want you to understand something. If you're dead broke right now, are we about to get into hunt season? Come up Tuesday morning, October 1, yes or no? Yes. The season's about to start, am I right? Okay, if you're dead broke in this room and you don't have no money, you can finish the season, you can be done by March 1 or the end of March, and you can be rich and have money in the bank. Do you get it? Okay. Tell me where else in the world you can change your life in five months. Nowhere. Right here we can. Everybody understand this. If you're not in sales, when I'm done talking, you're going to be like, dude, I want to I work in sales. I promise you. Because sales is the way. Now, by the way, who in here wants to break their family bloodline? Break the bloodline. What's that mean? That means if you don't like the way shit's currently going in your family and you want it, maybe your parents got divorced. Maybe you never had anybody rich in your family before. Maybe you can't make the choices you want to make and you're the one that's going to step up and say, hey, man, I'm going to fix that shit. Who's that? Raise your hand. Let me see your hands. Bloodline breakers. All right, guys, have a seat. Let's start. Super important. I want to ask every one of you this one question, and I want you to write it down. By the way, everybody, this is my wife, Jacqueline Elliott. Let me make sure. I know you met her earlier. She is, she is not my queen. She's my battle mate. She goes to war with me. If you're in a relationship in here, your goal isn't to raise a little princess. Your goal is to make your girl your battle mate and you guys hold each other accountable. If you want to make more money, what do you got to do? Increase your levels of accountability. Am I correct? Okay, that's what I'm going to talk about today. You guys going to the next level. Um, I've got some of my team over here, Elliot Army. We got Ian. You got his brother Evan over there. We got Brennan. We got Tommy. We got Sierra. Notice, husband, wife. What did they say? Don't hire the families. You can't get close to your people. Fuck it. Get close to your people. Listen, you want to grow the baddest ass team on planet Earth, yes or no? Get close to your people. If everyone's going that way, go that way. We don't play those games. That's why we built the nine-figure business quick. I'm gonna tell you how to break records really quickly in a minute, and it comes down to human capital, which is people, okay? We got Ali, you got Prince Ali. You got Evan, which is Ian's twin brother. He's got tattoos, he's done. They were some of the first, they were the first people that joined the Elliott group. My crazy ones up front. Um, we got Maria and Bryson. They're married. We shouldn't hire. Maria was not good at sales. Who's an introvert in here? I'm not good at sales. I'm not very good at sales. Everybody is good at sales. Everything is sales. Convincing your wife to stay in love with you is selling. Convincing your kids to look up to you as your hero is selling. Am I right? Getting a raise is selling. Do you get it? Everything, selling is the art of communication. Do we have a good service in this company, yes or no? Yes. Okay, do people struggle and stay the same if we don't close them and sell them, yes. Or worse, they could end up at the competition buying something that isn't as great as the product that we have, right? It's a disservice if we don't sell. 
If you don't know who I am, I want to tell you something. I'm just like you. You're me and I am you. We are all the same. You guys see this kid? This is me. And I asked the question right here. What does that say? It says, are you running towards a life that you want? Or are you running from a life that you hate? Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, got to train. That's the way it works. Train or complain. It's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's going to be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. I want you to ask yourself right now, everybody identify which one you are. Some of you in here, you're like, man, I want this thing. And then some of you, you're like, I hate that. You don't always have to know who you want to be. Sometimes you can know who you don't want to be. Does that make sense? My dad's a coward. My dad's a pushover. Never has he hit a traitor on the head. Never has my dad stood up for what he believes in. My mom left when I was two years old. She's an alcoholic. She's a quitter. I've been taught to quit my whole life. Who do you want to be? Who don't you want to be? Some of you in here, listen, listen to me. This isn't some uh, seminar in here today. This is me telling you, you don't have to have it all figured out, okay? You don't have to. Who don't you want to be? Who's someone, if someone were to say you're like them, you'd be like, I ain't like them. Don't even say that. I'm not even playing that. Who's someone in your family that's been disrespecting your bloodline? Okay? You're like, I don't want to be like that. You guys know you can change your DNA. You can change the way you look. You can change your intentions. You can change your heart. You can change everything. Do you guys know that? Do you guys know how resilient human beings are? It's crazy. So I want you to understand this. This is me running from a life that I hate. Does anybody know what that little, the little metal lawn chairs are with the plastic braids? You guys, I'm 45. Who, who knows what the metal lawn chairs are? They're called the poor people's lawn chair. I had hundreds of them in my garage because you could get them at every garage sale. People threw them on the curb. We picked them up, put them in the garage. I got in the car business so everybody understands how I first started to create my wealth. I would have loved to got hired at Vedanta and would have been selling timeshares. Holy shit, I would have died here. But guess what? They hired me in the automotive industry. You know why? Because that was the only place that hired anybody that walked in and was breathing. At 18 years old, I stuttered. I was, I was an introvert and I didn't know anything about sales and I was voted the least likely to make it. I would have not got a job here, but I got a job selling cars. I want to tell you something real quick. I entered the world of sales. You see that plastic lawn chair right there? That plastic lawn chair made me rich. My first day on the job, and I'm fast forwarding, but I want you to understand something. This is where you decide, am I running from a life I hate or am I running towards the life I want? You know why I'm hard to beat? Because I hate where I came from. I hate it. I'm not afraid to go broke. I'm not going back. I'm not going back. And so some of you, that chip on your shoulder getting pissed off, some of you need to get pissed off. Stop settling. Stop settling. You don't like something in your life? Who's going to fix it? You or do we need someone else to come along? Do we need another man in the family to come along and fix it? It's me. And I, listen, maybe I wasn't qualified, but that's where we're going to get into training today really quickly. That plastic lawn chair, great. When they hired me when I was 18, the sales was made by living and dying by the gate. That's where the cars pulled in, the front, right? I took that plastic lawn chair at 18 years old and I set it in the middle of the drive. There was only one way in, one way out the dealership. That plastic lawn chair, everybody that pulled in, how you doing, Andy Elliott, are you here for sales of service? Sales, hey, how you doing, Andy Elliott, come on over here. I would walk with them with the car so that no other salesman could snipe me. Right? Because if I was like, oh, pull up over there, the dude would cut me off. And I was like, son of a bitch, I would just hold on to the door. And I'm like, how you guys doing? And I'd walk him right into the deal, right? 
Then, if they said service, I'd be like, that's amazing. Look, what we've learned is that cars are expensive to maintain. If you go to the service drive and they tell you it's going to cost a lot of money, here's my card, come see me, I'm right there. Most of our customers trade out, no down payment, don't have to fix your car, we'll cover the bill. I'll even get you a lower payment on something newer. It was always me out there. Watch. In the beginning, when you're out working everybody, they're going to hate you. Those lawn chairs, they would snap them in half and break them and throw them in the creek. Every day I brought a new one back. Every day. <laughs> Listen, some of you right now, you're going to start telling your lawn chair story. This is a big one right here. This is me. This is funny. My family is 350 to 450 pounds. I need everybody to know this. The reason why I'm so obsessed with like taking care of myself, I'm not a bodybuilder. I have to take care of myself. I know what happens when I don't. I know what my family looks like. I don't want to look like them. Just being honest. I don't get to choose my genes, but I can choose my choices and my decisions. Every one of you, every one of you in this room are beautiful people. But some of you, you don't look that good looking because you're letting yourself go. You got to get your life right. I want to tell you the first thing I learned, I put four things here. These are some stories I'm going to tell you, sixth grade breakup. This is me in the sixth grade at the end of the summer. At the beginning of the summer, the girl, you remember the talent show when we were young? Did anybody remember the talent shows? At the end of the year in elementary school, right? Everybody did the little talent trick. The girl in sixth grade that I was like, she did this talent show, this spinning deal. She was smoking hot. And I was like, damn, that needs to be my girlfriend. I asked her out, and guess what happened? She said, yeah. Dude, you know when you guys get your first crush, right? You're like, oh, man, like, you'll never forget that. And Jackie, my wife, she, she's the love of my life. This was my first crush. About a week after being with her, rejection. You guys ever got your heart crushed? And it's something silly to parents, but when you're little, like, that girl was mine. I was a chubby little kid. I was chubby. I had cellulite on my stomach. I had poofy titties and nipples. I was a sixth grader, and my parents were, my, they were all overweight. I didn't know any better. This girl comes and breaks up with me. I'm like, what's the deal? And she said, I'm breaking up with you because I'm going to go out with this guy. And I was like, why? And she's like, because he has a six pack. And if you guys want to know why I'm kind of freaked out with this six pack it's traumatized me my whole life. Six pack or you're fired. Six pack or you're fired. Let me explain what happened. You see this kid? I didn't know the blueprint. That was me going into seventh grade. I'm not fat. Listen to me. All I did was I ran around my neighborhood all summer long. I did 500 sit-ups a day. I did hundreds of push-ups. I had no mentor. I just knew that I was going to burn that girl's eyes out with my winning. And eventually, at the end of that summer, going into seventh grade, she was going to shit when she saw me again. <laughs> and guess what? That was me and my buddy going back into seventh grade. She wanted to date again, and I dated everyone in the world, and I became, in school at a young age, the only kid with a, seven, with a almost six, eight pack going into seventh grade, and I was chunky in sixth grade. That's called total recreation. That's what it's called. If someone's in here, you don't have to be an adult to totally recreate. You can do it as a kid. You can do it at any age, any time in my life that I've gotten pissed off, which, by the way, you're going to learn really quick. I don't know what fuels you, but if you tell me I can't do it, I'm going to rip your throat out. Listen, tell me what fuels you. Oh, yeah, Val, you're the best. Good job, Val. Flattery, flattery, flattery. Or you're not going to do it, man. You ain't going to do shit. Come on, dude. You're just, no one even believes in you, bro. You feel it? You're going to lose, bro. Nobody even knows. You're going to lose. We see you. You're like, you talking to me? Okay, that's what I needed. Do you guys feel it when I tell you you're not going to make it? Do you feel your bones crawling? Do you feel your skin crawling? Or are you one of these people that need a pat on the back every day? I don't want a pat on the back. I do better when people bet against me. How, how about you guys? Bet against me or pat you on the back? What do you want? 70% of people that are successful operate in darkness. Hey, I'm the sales guy. 
I'm smiling, my eyes are smiling, my energy is good, my vibes are great. I'm operating in darkness. I got something to prove. Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Okay, you gotta train. That's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. Rule number one to being massively successful, salespeople, never stop proving yourself, ever. Don't go one day, you prove yourself to your husband, your wife, your kids, yourself, your family, your haters, your customers, it never ends, do you get it? Stop proving yourself, you're out. You're no longer a competitor once you stop proving yourself. Okay, poor. Who in here was raised poor? Raise your hand. Hey, it's cool. I love it. I love poor people. Matter of fact, I hate rich people. <laughs> Let me explain. Okay, are you ready? I'm a poor person with money. I don't like rich people. I want to explain. Growing up, I never had any money. I'd ask my dad, Dad, can I have a dollar? Can I have two dollars? Can I have five dollars? No, there's no money. There's no money. There's no money. There's no money. So I would jump fences. I would jump into a music park. I would do anything. I would just sneak my way in. And, you know, it's like you wear the same two pair of clothes every day, right? Like you can, people can tell. You guys, if you have money in here, your, your kids may hang out with someone you know that's poor. And you understand what, what kind of life their parents live. I take good care of those kids. Well, I had the opposite. My best friends had money. I was the poor kid. I want to tell you the story about being poor. I, I needed this. Never play the victim. Never play it. Never. It's a disservice to your bloodline when you play the victim. Everything happens for you, just like we've heard all day long. And listen, you have to believe this shit. I was in seventh grade. I'm this kid. I'm ready to go. We want to chase some girls, right? Well, my buddy's going to the lake. We're going into the eighth grade. I got my first taste of what it felt like to be called out and be poor. And I needed this. Maybe some of you haven't ever got hurt. Maybe I'm the only guy in the room. Have you ever got hurt before? You ever wanted something, you couldn't get it, you didn't have the choices because you didn't have money and it pissed you off? This is why you need to get your shit together. And if you're in here and you can relate with me on this, maybe it's not exactly this, but it's something like this. And just like Keaton said, choose your enemies wisely. Who's the enemy, okay? This is why I'm so passionate about all of you in here and getting you guys to this state and you're never getting out of it and we go destroy this season. I literally was told my buddies are going down to the lake and, I, and we were going to spend a, a week at the lake with my buddy's family and she said the mother that hated me that everybody had to have $20 cash to go to the lake for the week. Now, all my best friends are all going and their parents are like 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20 bucks. My best friend goes, Andy, you know, if you don't have the money, my mom is like, she's not going to let you in, dude. I'm like, I got the money. I remember asking my dad, and he's like, you know, we don't have money. So I tell him, I got the money. I rode in the back of the truck two hours away to drive to this lake. His older brother was driving. When we pull up, it's like, there's the house. And we all go to walk in, right? And she's like, boom, she's at the door. You got your 20 bucks? This is the mom of my best friend. You got your 20 bucks? You got your 20 bucks? Andy, do you have your $20? We just drove two hours to get there. I said, uh, it might have blown on the truck. Give me just a second. I'm this kid. I'm only 13 years old. I go back and I go, it must have blown out. And she goes, you're a liar. Listen, remember this. My mom left when I was two. My dad's been married and divorced five times by now. He's never home. It's kids raising kids. Does that make sense? Jerry Springer. <laughs> it, it, that's what, that was our life. So like, I'm not trying to lie. I just wanted to be with my friends. She goes, I needed this. She goes, you're poor. You know what pissed piss me off? It pisses me off that she was right and my parents didn't care. 
I don't want to make a lot of money. I want to have choices. Some of you in here right now, you're living a life way less than you could live. You need to wake the f up. This selling season, you need to wake up. This selling season, you need to break the bloodline. This, what she told me, stuck with me even till today. Watch. She goes, get out of here. You're going to sleep on the porch. You're not coming in this house. Watch. Don't feel sorry for me. Best thing she ever did. She goes, you're not coming in here. Get out. Watch. All week long, I slept on the porch or my friend slept inside. It was summertime. Sleeping on the porch wasn't that bad. Bradley always talks about being broke wasn't that bad. He slept on a beach when he was 18. He was poor. He was homeless. He's like, wasn't that bad. Okay, we were on a beach. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't that bad. All week, she fed the kids food. She made sure, don't give him food. Don't. She wanted to make sure that I never came around again. I want to tell you guys something. What situation in your life did somebody say you weren't going to make it? Did somebody say something? Maybe an ex-girlfriend, maybe a parent, maybe a teacher, maybe an ex-employee say you're never going to make it without me. You're not going to amount to anything. What did they say? You need to write that shit down. That shit, it needs to run with you for life. Now, this is one of the many lessons. That sixth grade breakup rejection, being poor, no parents ever being around. I remember I, I, when I met Jackie, I call her, I call her mama because she is like my mom. I love her to death, but I never had a mom. I watched the way she treats my three kids. Oh my God, I would have given anything to have that kind of love in her home. Zero love. Not a victim story. My family is going to have the most loving atmosphere on planet Earth. What you don't have as a kid, you crave as an adult. So now, you guys want to know why I'm good at sales? Because I love everybody. Everybody I'm with, it doesn't matter what I say. What I say is cool. How they feel is what matters. I own them with love. Does that make sense? Not having these things. You ever seen uh, a dad's an alcoholic, and then you're like, oh, I'm an alcoholic too because my dad was. That's an excuse. That's like saying, uh, I got beat, so I'm going to beat my kids. You guys feel me? What is it in here? Rob said, identify your brand book. What is it in here that you're carrying into your bloodline that you need to f cross it off today? Just think, listen, I'm not better than you. God gave us a mind and he gave us a heart. We have to use them. We have to educate ourselves and be smart. Why we're in this room today, number one, I love sales, but the better we become, the more that we can self-correct ourselves. When we can take us when we're stuck and get us unstuck, now we're valuable and we can get other people unstuck and now we can get paid big time money for solving big time problems. Does that make sense? Everything, what have you been through? What have you been through? Use that as shit as fuel. And, and, and guess what? Yes. Do I want you to have a chip on your shoulder? Do I want you to get pissed off? Yes, yes. Do I want you to, listen, you know what I learned? A lot of this stuff, people have these things happen and they self-sabotage their life. They can't seem to escape this shit. This shit happened for you to become who you're supposed to become. It was all good. All these people need a thank you letter. Zero examples in my life. My number one goal for all of you is to be the greatest example and the greatest standard of human excellence that your family has ever seen. You know what I want? I want every one of you, the way you live today, I don't care. If you're counted out and if you're nobody and if no one believes in you, beautiful, love it, been there. Don't stay there. The bigger the shit that you're in, the bigger the testimony. Do you guys get it? Your marriage is in the trash can right now? Good, pull it out. Trust me, everybody in the world will want to know how you pulled it out. You're dead broke last on the sales board. Everybody's like, last year you bombed? Good. Don't bomb this year. Be number one. I did it. Now watch. This right here, notice I put minimum wage mindset. This is the first car, it's the only car my dad ever bought me. I watched my dad go to this guy's house and pull out $400 cash. And I remember thinking, I'd never seen that much cash in my life. We took home this truck, 72 Chevy, three on the tree, no reverse. It didn't have a floorboard. 
which means when you're driving, I could see the ground. You could just spit. You could just spit because it was ground. I couldn't believe I got a car. Everyone else in school had all the new cars. That's what I had. You know what I had? Trash can mindset. Was I good? Was I fired up that my dad had seen all that? I want to ask every one of you guys that I'd seen my dad pay for $400 cash for this truck. Yeah, that was so cool. But once I knew that this next thing could happen, my first commission check came out, I trash that mindset. Everybody listen to me. Once you see a good marriage, you're an idiot if you'll run with the bad marriage ever again. Does that make sense? Once you see someone that goes from being overweight to getting in shape, if you're overweight, you're a fool. If you stay overweight, you don't get in shape and do what they do. Anything that anyone else can do, you can do. Swear on my life. That's why you got to stay stirred up. That's why you got to stay pissed off. That's it. It's the only way to get somewhere. You got to have emotion. You got to anchor it to something that when you don't want to do it, you do it anyway. Winners do what they don't want to do when they don't feel like doing it, but do it like they love it. That's what winners do, and they do it every day, and there's no one there to remind them, no one. I've got a badass team. I've got a badass wife. I'm the leader. I build more leaders. Whatever you're letting slide, you're letting everyone else that loves you around you slide. Every one of you, you have no idea who you can become. Watch this. The day everything changed. Does everybody remember your first commission? Watch this shit. See, now, this next slide, I'm going to give you a little peek. Are you ready? See this one? Oh, time to kill. I made my first commission. My manager, I know you all remember, I never heard, held more than $5 in my hand at one time. Never. Never. My manager paged me. I got a lay down. You know what a lay down is, right? Yeah. You know, when you didn't really have to even do anything, they just they were going to buy it anyways. I had someone come in. They were going to buy it anyways. I was nice to them. They signed. I remember, this is how stupid I was. I'm 18. My, do you know what an interest rate is? Yes. 18, I didn't know what an interest rate was. I knew what the interstate was. That's where you drive your car in the, in the United States. So watch this. I'm sitting there, and my manager goes, I remember, he's pulling the credit, right? I'm like, this guy wants to buy this car. And he's like, let me get his credit. And he, he pulls it, and he goes, oh, this guy's gold. And I'm like, gold's good. Like, that's <laughs> got to be good. Then he goes, okay. And they tried to, you know, sh like, send another salesman in, right? To bring in the pencil, to bring in the proposal, to bring in the offer. My customer loved me so much because I was so nice to him. The customer told my manager, no disrespect, but I like him so much, if you send another person in here, I'm leaving. I only want to deal with him. Anybody ever had that happen? Yeah. Dude, that's called the power of making people love you. Okay, remember what I didn't have as a kid, I craved as an adult, I made this guy like me. He, my manager hands me the piece of paper, Val. I walk in, I lay it down, and I say, would you like to do option A or option B? Very simple. He goes, and he just looked at the paper and he goes, what's the interest rate? And I was like, because like it was like, he, like, the numbers were way bigger than he thought. And I go, the interstate? <laughs> I really didn't understand. And he goes, I'll do option B. He signed. I brought it back to my manager. And he goes, get the f*** out of here. I go, I, well, what's going on? He goes, Get him in finance right now. I don't know what's going on. He goes, take the truck to the back. Go get it cleaned up. I'm going to get him in finance. Good job. That's it. All I know is the next hour, I was in the back tire shining this car, cleaning it up. This guy went through finance. I pull it around. They show him how everything's done. By the way, the guy gets in and drives off. My manager was Andy Elliott, sales tower. I go in and he goes, you know how much money you just made? I ain't ate all day. It's about 6 o'clock in the afternoon. This is your first commission. Think. Think. You see this book, How to Kill? I say this jokingly, but this is where I went to war. This is where I decided my, my blood flo flew through my veins differently. He said, you know how much money you just made? $1,700. And, and, and I never held more than five bucks in my hand. I'm 18. And I go, I go, what do you mean? And he's like, 
you are going to get paid tomorrow $1,700. And you get the high gross spiff of the month because you have the biggest gross of the month. That's going to give you 500 cash in the meeting. You made 2224 hours. And I remember, I go, I'm going to die selling cars. <laughs> I'm going to die. Watch. Everybody, see this right here? What was I ready to do? Prove everyone wrong. Everyone that day, they were about to eat their words. Everybody, how many of you right now, you're just waiting on your way out? It's here. It's in this room. If you're someone's husband and you're in this room and your wife sells, you need to be like, put me in sales. Dude, babe, you're not just going to sell. I'm selling now too. This is real. These checks cash. This is the life you can get. And this is the life that we have in this room. If you're not making it big, it's because you don't want it and you've lost your edge. One of the things that you'll always see with me is that I always keep my edge. That's the key. I had a chip on my shoulder. I outworked everyone. I outtrained everyone. If you want to make more money than anyone in the world, three things. One, you're always selling something. Two, you're looking for something to sell. I'm looking for a deal. Three, I'm training to get better. Period. We're done. So if I was, if I was in sales and I'm in this room, what else do we do other than sell, look for something to sell, and train to get better? Do we talk about football? Do we talk about what's going on? No, we don't talk about any of that. Do you guys get me? Yes or no? Everybody, do you understand the philosophy of sales? Sales and leadership will make you rich. Period. You don't, need a, you don't need a diploma. You need to work hard. You need to, you need to build a skill set. You need to care about people. You guys, every one of you in this room, every one of you in this room can break your bloodline starting today. I know this. There's going to be 10 or 20% of you that are going to be the number one this, this, next, uh, this next run, this next five, six months coming up, and no one ever even saw you coming. They didn't see me coming. Okay? I took that number one spot, and I blew their ass out of the water. Who's going to do that this selling season? Raise your hand. This selling season, raise your hand if you're calling your shot, saying I'm going to be at the top of the board. Call your shot. Put your hand up. And guess what? If your buddy's like, come on, bro. Listen, prove them wrong. Dude, does anybody in here know what's inside of you but you? Yes or no? Yes. No one knows what's inside of you but you. If I said, Val, you're not going to make it. Hey, you're not going to make it. You don't have it. How do I know what is in him? I don't. Nobody knows but his ass. He is the only one who knows what he's capable of. Does that make sense? It's between you and you at this point. Now, these are some important lessons that I got to share on how to get it all, keep it all, and keep building every day of your life. Right, I met Jackie. This is me and her. 26, 24. Super important. I met the love of my life. I promised Jackie the ride of a lifetime. I thought I knew what the definition of success was, and I didn't. Let me explain. Please, everybody listen. I thought success was Jackie having a purse full of cash, a paid-off house, paid-off cars. I just thought if we had all the money in the world, we were going to be good. That's wrong. I need everybody to listen to me really carefully. Do you want to be the most dangerous competitor on planet Earth, yes or no? You guys want to be? Yes. I was taught at 18, sacrifice for what you want, or what you want becomes the sacrifice. I married a crazy ass Mexican wife who's hot and blooded, who said, why are you so one dimensional? Why do you think that you can only have one thing and you can't have all of the things that you want? Super important, guys, if you're watching this video right now and you're like, Andy, I'm not built like that. Bullshit. Yes, you are. Got to train.
It's the way it works. Train or complain, it's your choice. Okay, every day I train the greatest in the world. You know what I mean? Are you ready to kick some ass and build your legacy and make history? If you are, in the description box below on this YouTube video, there's gonna be a little link. You click on it, enter your phone number, email, full name, and I will personally reach out to you in the next 24 hours. If you're serious about kicking some ass, going to the new level, recreating, next version of yourself, I'm your guy. Let's kill it. I had a trash can mindset. I was taught and trained by leaders my whole life who said that if we wanted to make a lot of money, we had to kiss our families goodbye. That is a lie. Matter of fact, if any of you still want to make more money than you know what to do with, you're going to need a family to support you to go make all that money. I just did a bad job of that. And I'm going to tell you guys, listen to me. You want to get rich? You know how... If you were to ask me, and you may be different, would I take a million cash or would I have my wife say, I'm proud of you? I would choose, I say my wife's proud of me. I don't need the million cash. When my wife's proud of me, I fuck it up. Guys, think about it. How strong does a man become when his wife supports him? How strong does a badass woman come when, his, when the husband supports him? You know what I know? How many great men have you seen women cut their man's legs off? All the time. We don't get taught how to bring our families with us in business. Listen, it's a very sensitive subject because people go, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't have to choose getting rich or having a badass family. How about we get both? Do you guys get it? Listen, listen. There's a little thing that Keaton said when he was up here. He said, be present. When you're at work, you're at work 12 hours a day. Good. Kick ass. When you go home, kick ass at home. What's your problem? That's the problem, is that most of us, we really aren't where we are, which is why our life is pure chaos. I'm going to teach it right now. This is how it goes. So God gave me a son. You see this good-looking kid? This is, this is my son, Ian. Ian was the greatest thing that ever happened, me and Jacqueline. We said, oh my God, we want a boy. God gave us one. You know what? I ran this play. This is a play of death. I worked all the time. Even when I was at home, my mind was still at work. You want me to tell you why? Some of you may say, Andy, so... You're saying when I'm at home, I can't talk about work. No, I didn't bring her with me on the journey. I never sh shared goals with her. Me and her weren't close. So when I came home, if I talked about work and she wasn't included in the goals, it was me and it was not her. Does that make sense? Guess what? I ate like crap. You see this? How many of you right now can make good decisions while you're at work and eat clean? Every one of you, right? Yes or no? Watch what happens when you don't take care of yourself. I just wanted to make money. All I wanted was success. I got my two beautiful daughters. Two more girls came afterwards. Here we go. Worked all the time. Even when I was at home, my mind was still at work. I ate like crap. All I wanted to do was make money. All I wanted was success. Does anybody understand? What, nobody else is going through any of this? Do you guys see me right now? Do you guys see me? Yes. Okay. Who's that? Ew. <laughs> this is what happens when you don't go after it all. People, you ever heard burned out? You ever heard that? It's fake. Just so you're all aware. It's complete bullshit. It's fake. You don't get burned out, you lose your purpose. When you lose your purpose, you look in the mirror and you can't even recognize yourself anymore. Do you guys want to be in this game until you die? Yes or no? I do. I do. Do you want to be the most dangerous competitor on planet Earth that your enemy fears? Yes or no? Yes. Listen to me. When you watch the movie 300 and the Spartan warriors, are they big, out of shape people running around with swords? No. <laughs> Neither will we be. Okay? 
my wife pulled me to the side and I put, she had a hard conversation with me. She said this little sentence that is every person's nightmare and will piss you off, make your blood boil, but only real change starts with truth and honesty. She said, me and the kids, I've learned to live without you. I'm gonna be really clear, Andy. You promised me the ride of a lifetime. Sure, we're making money. By the way, little secret. When I got my shit together, I made way more money. I fucking liked me. I didn't even know that I didn't like me because I was numb. I was working so hard to just try to make money, which is not the goal. The goal is to get it all. All of it. Guys, I'm 45. I was 35 in that picture. That was 10 years ago. I changed my life in my later 30s. Some of you, you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. Don't give me that shit. Yeah, I'm older. Fuck you. <laughs> Quit giving me that shit. By the way, I'm going to give you a secret, men and women. As you get older, your bodies, women, when they have three babies, their bodies are better than before they had babies. I'm not even joking. For real. Men, your bodies can do things with you when you're older that you never thought they could do. You get in shape faster. Muscle, it's crazy. By the way, this isn't about just fitness. This is about this. See this? This is the normal family. Look at this. Hey, the only thing cool in this picture is her and her. Over here is a burned out dad smiling in the pictures, thinking about how the hell we're gonna hit our sales quota tomorrow morning. <laughs> Even though I was in the pictures, Jackie would show me. Remember that picture? Do you remember it? And I'd be like, no. Because I didn't remember it. Guys, I wanna tell you something. Your purpose as a man is to show your wife what a real man is. Women, the purpose as a woman is to show your husband what a badass woman is. As the example for your family, if you don't have anybody to look up to in your family like I didn't, how about you be the first one and you break the bloodline? Let me explain. Will your name live past your death? Will they remember your name? It is up to you. And all of you, this is my goal for us all, is to make a decision today to get stirred the f*** up and stop settling and kill mediocrity. And the devil only attacks what's valuable. And what's valuable is your mental health and is your family. He wants your mind. He wants your heart. Chad said, loyalty is everything. I hate betrayal. I hate treason. You find a good company, you find a good organization, you've got a great opportunity, you give everything you got, you build your empire right here. You stop looking around, you start looking in the mirror. Does that make sense? Yes. All of us, notice all, all of us in here can all make the decision to become filthy rich. By the way, be close to God. Be our wife's hero, our children's hero. You want your wife to admire you? Good. Watch what happens next. This guy, that guy, that guy. Do you see two different people? That guy did this. And I've talked about Rob Bailey, if anybody's paid attention. I went to the gym. Let me explain really quickly. The gym is a sacred place. It's not a place to say take selfies, although I'm taking one. I, 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 I was like, it's at the end of the workout, which is fine. No texting, no email. Can everybody give 4% of their day, five days a week, to going and just working on yourself, yes or no? 4%, that's one hour. 4%, one hour. No texting, no emails. No phone calls. Listen, what does that say? Listen to Rob Bailey music, and I totally recreated my life. Rob Bailey didn't sing when he was on stage, although he should have, because then you would understand why we love him so much. Everybody write down Rob Bailey. 
write it down. Why? So Rob Bailey created this music, and it's called I Am Affirmation Music. You say, what is that? When I was listening to it, it goes, you will not forget my freaking name. It's like, it's like everything was like, screw the bottom, I belong at the top. And I was like, just listen to this shit that wasn't about singing about rappers or other people. It was all me. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. And I listened to this music. And by the way, here, when Jackie goed me and the kids have learned to live without you, you know what I did? I own my shit. I knew she was right. Can I ask a question? If you're in this room and you're out of shape, do you want to be in good shape, yes or no? Yes. Okay, then when I tell you to go get in good shape, say thank you, I owe you, and go do it. You don't get mad at fucking people when they call you up. I'm not calling you out. I'm calling you up. If you have a friend around you that's letting you be a loser and not be a winner, that is not a good friend. That person does not love you. If I say you're fat, you're out of shape, you have a shit marriage, you're not good at sales, I am telling you everyone else around you is allowing you to get away with that. I love you. I am telling you, knock it off. Does that make sense? All you guys need is one good person in your life that you, they, they can tell you the truth and you know that they believe in you more than everyone else. And by the way, are you capable of more? Yes, okay, don't fight them. Stop fighting them. Be like, you're right. I know it's hard. It's the, it's the ego you gotta battle through. When my wife had everything financially she could have, but then she goes, me and the kids learn to live without you, I got men that go, I oh, have dumped her. Yeah. Yeah, because that was your end of your life. You were maxed out, bro. That was my one to 10, that was my one. My wife knew my fucking 10 was unlimited, so she was pushing me. So should I get mad at her? Should I get mad at her for telling me I made for more and divorce her and get mad and be mean? Or should I be like, babe, you're fucking right. You know what happened? I said, you're right. And then that dude was born. Now, with that being said, that Rob Bailey music, I don't care how old you are, 4% of your day, five days a week, take a 30-day run with Rob. Listen to his music. Now, I'll warn you, you turn into a fucking monster. <laughs> this guy was born by that music. This, Jackie, the new man. My wife looked at me differently. She was proud of me. And lastly, I was proud of me. I want to tell every one of you the secret. Yes, you want to do it for your family. Yes, but honestly, at the end of the day, if you don't like you, you're out. You want to know the secret to closing every deal in the world? The secret? Moral authority. When I walk in, they fucking know that I'm living right. My eyes are the window to the soul. My eyes tell the story. My body language is infectious. My body's on fire. I feel good. I like me. I like them. The answer is yes, we will take it. I don't care. I don't care what they say. It's going to go my way because I like me. I care about people more than they care about themselves. Why? Because I like me. I love me. I'm not conceited. I'm not arrogant. I'm proud of me. I've changed my life. I want you all to feel what I feel. And I once didn't feel it. And I always wanted to feel this way. And every one of you can do this right now. And I want to tell you, that right there, me and my wife, as I get older, I'm getting younger. Listen, I don't know how long I'm going to live. And I know death's an uncontrollable. I came into this world, right? Everybody was rejoicing and I was crying. When I'm leaving, I want everybody crying and I'm rejoicing. I want when I fucking die and they bury me in the ground, I want no man, everybody listen carefully, I want no man to be able to come replace me. I don't want any father to be able to come in and step me and replace me from me being a, a great father. I'm gonna be the best father. I'm going to be the greatest sales guy, the greatest leader, the greatest operator. I'm going to be the most caring motherfucker. I'm going to give it all while I'm alive. And when I die, no one's coming to replace me. Are you replaceable? 
Everybody is replaceable. I am trying my hardest to be unreplaceable. That needs to be your goal. So what, so what do we got to do? Number one, we got to keep it new. Day one, motherfucker. Every day it's day one. Day one, baby. Day one. I just got this job. Also, if you treat something like it's a beginning, there'll never be an end. It'll never be an end. It'll never go away. It'll stay fresh. It'll stay cool. You'll keep proving yourself. And then I put this here. As my kids get older, I take them everywhere with me. There's no conversation that my kids can't be a part of. I ask my kids, do you want me to feed you ice cream like two, three, four, five-year-olds and make you feel good? Or do you want the cold, hard truth and you want me to treat you like the badass leader you're going to be? Which one? Treat me like the bad ASS, dad. All right, done. 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 I don't care how you were raised. I don't care who you're leading. You guys can decide. You're a leader. You, you set the example. And everyone else around you, you build them to be leaders. This last thing, I show my daughters what a good man lo looks like and what a good man is by operating daily with mom. This one, this is a big, big deal for me. Be close to God. Who in here loves God? You think God here made you to be fucking small or be a savage? Yeah, trust me, okay? If you're a son or his daughter, you're made to be a savage. Okay, have a great marriage. Be our kid's hero. Make as much money as you want. Who's ready to make a ton of money in selling season? Raise your hand. Hey, who's ready to recreate their life? No bullshit. And by the way, what if no one else believes in you? What if you're sitting next to someone, you're like, dude, I'm going to do this. They're like, come on, bro, I watched you last week. Hey, can you make a decision and be like, no, I'm going to freaking run this through. Watch. Remember what I said, if they say you're not going to do it, prove them right or prove them wrong. Are you that coward in here that when I say you can't do something, you're going to freaking quit? Are you that person that's going to follow through and be like, watch me, watch me. By the way, I don't want people to hate me. I want to show them that what they said was impossible is possible. Do you get it? I didn't tell you guys this, but when I was 18, and then I'll do what Chad said, I'll do one last thing, like he said three times, so I get to do it three times, Okay. <laughs> When I was 18, I was in the automotive industry. They told me the most a car salesman could make was 125 grand in 1999. I want to tell every one of you, I made 125 grand when I was 18. At 19, I made 225. At 20 years old, I made 500 grand. Everybody listen to me real quick. They don't know what's possible for you. No one knows. Only you know. Will you be the name that everyone carries in their mouth in this back in 2024 season and beginning 2025 season of what's possible and what the comeback kid looks like? I'm the comeback kid. I'm an overcomer. Okay? You know what the comeback kid is? You just keep coming back. No, listen to me. That's what I want for all of you. Okay? And then... I put this here, an individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. We built Elliott Army, there's about 100 of us now back in Scottsdale. And I want to finish today with this is a family. Are you guys a family, yes or no? Yes. Are you guys a team? Yes. Everybody up on your feet, we're going to do something. This is how we're going to finish and I'm going to roll out. Everybody, listen to me. Are you an army, a family, and a team, yes or no? Yes. Okay. I'm going to say Vidanta, and you're going to say Army. And we're going to go five times. I want to burn this place to the ground. Are you ready? We're going to practice. You ready? All right. One, two, three. Vidanta. Army. Vidanta. Army. Vidanta. Army. Vidanta. Army. Vidanta. Army. Let's go. Yeah. That's it, baby. Hey guys, looks like you made it to the end of the video. You're the true point zero zero zero. One percenters. Look, I know one percenters that can make it halfway through the video, but making it all the way through, you guys are the best. Now, here's what I'd like to do. Number one, I want to get closer to you. The fact that you made it all the way through the video, you're like, man, dude, I want to roll with this guy. Okay, so I need to connect with you. 
Down below, there's a description box on this YouTube video. There's a link, it says coach with me one-on-one, -on -one, okay? If you'll go and you'll enter your information, I'll reach out to you in the next 24 hours. You can tell me what you need help with, what your goals are, and we will crush it together. I would love to help you guys go to the next level in life. You can tell I'm changing my life really fast, and I know that you guys want the same thing. I'd love to go with you on that journey. So right now, if you'd like to partner with me, team with me, if you want me to help coach you and push you, everybody needs a coach, a higher level of accountability to go to the next level. Go to the description box below, click on the link, fill out your information. I'll talk to you in the next 24 hours. Let's kill it.